Hi everyone, welcome to this week's video. This week I wanted to talk to you about my favourite cut flowers to grow in the garden. The ones that are really quite easy to start off and grow from seed and you will get lots of glorious blooms throughout a long summer season. So let's go and have a look in the flower patch and see what we can see. This has got to be where it all started in Cloudberry Flowers. It is the corn flowers, otherwise known as bachelor buttons. And I just love these flowers. They come in so many different colours that I've found over the years. I used to just grow the traditional blue ones and now I've discovered that there are so many other varieties that you can grow. I've got a nice purple one here and I'll show you some of the other ones that are growing in this particular patch in a minute but they last such a long time in the vase. I've had people coming back to me saying that my flowers are three weeks old, the corn flowers, and they're still going strong and then they start to dry and um, they just look amazing. So they can get in a little bit of a tangle in amongst all the horizontal netting and some flower farmers don't like um, growing them for that reason, but I've never found it to be too much of a problem. I think if you space your corn flowers out a little bit more, then they might not get in so much of a tangle. And they are brilliant to grow from seed, really easy Easy. they germinate really quickly you can grow them at a couple of times in the year you can grow them in the autumn for overwintering or you can grow them in the late winter early spring and then just keep successionally sowing them once a month or so until June and you'll get a whole succession of cornflowers throughout the entire season So here we have got Larkspur, absolutely love it. I love it for its spikes that I can use in bouquets and I also love it for drying to make biodegradable confetti for weddings and events. You can see this glorious blue one here, absolutely gorgeous. My top tip for growing larkspur would be to put the seeds in the fridge for a week before you sow them. It can be a little bit tricky to get them to germinate but that will help you a lot in getting them going in the first place. And they all need some support netting in the garden because they grow really quite tall, as tall as me you can see here, and um, a bit of rain and a bit of wind will just knock them over. So you'll need some horizontal support netting or else um, lots of canes and twine to keep them upright. So here in the cutting garden we have got Dorcas and this is an umbilifier and it is absolutely gorgeous because it comes in a range of colours from whites to just a touch of pink to deeper reds. And it makes a lovely filler in bouquets and it's really easy to grow from seed and you can grow it a couple of times in the year you can sow some in the autumn and try and overwinter them for earlier flowers or you can grow it in the late winter early spring for summer flowers just now So here's another of my favourites, it's the corn cockle and it provides lots of lovely purple flowers on strong stems throughout the growing season and you can see some of these here, I'll show you closer in a minute but they're absolutely gorgeous. 
And what I love about corn cockles is that they're really easy to grow. The seeds are really large, so they're easy to work with. And also they overwinter really well here in Scotland. So there's a lot of things that it's quite tough to get through the winter time, especially if it's a harsh winter. But corn cockles seem to grow really well. So if I start the seeds off in around about August, September time and plant them out before the first frost, they will put down roots and then they will go dormant over the winter. But come springtime, there will be a bit of warmth and they'll just burst into growth and give you nice early flowers and for some reason the corn cockles do really well so things like Ami Magis and other hardy annual I find slightly more tricky to overwinter in the garden but these corn cockles every year they will do really well for me. So here in the garden we've got Gypsophila convent garden which is one of my favourite filler flowers for bouquets. It's really easy to grow from seed, it's a hardy annual so again you can try sowing it in the late summer, early autumn and overwintering it. I get most success from keeping it in the greenhouse or under cover over winter. I haven't really got any that have come through in Scotland outside in the garden. But if you can overwinter some in the greenhouse then you'll get earlier flowers in late May the following year. And it's great succession sowing again, you can get an abundance of flowers throughout the growing season. When you cut Gypsophila down, quite low, low down to put it in your bouquets on the stems then you should get another flush of flowers coming through as well. And you can't beat it, it's just lovely airy, small delicate white flowers. Another one I grow that's quite similar to Gypsophila convent garden is Saponaria which is very similar in its branching effect and it has dainty white and pink flowers that you can grow as well. Without a shadow of a doubt, nigella has to be one of my top favourite cut flowers. Before I started growing flowers seven years ago, I'd never heard of nigella, but as soon as I started growing it, I fell in love with it. I love the flowers, they are just really different, they're delicate but there's so much going on with them to have a look at and they have nice feathery foliage on them and when they finish flowering they produce the most amazing seed pods which you can use in buttonholes and bouquets. I like to collect the seeds from the finished flowers and the seed pods in the autumn and then I can sow them for flowers the following year. So let's have a closer look at these stunning flowers. This is another of my favourites in the cutting garden, it's the snapdragons. They're coming into bloom now in lots of different beautiful shades. Um, we've got pink ones, we've got white ones, we've got all sorts coming in the flower patch just now. great spikes in bouquets. They're a real structural feature and these ones are on lovely long thick strong stems just now making them great for cutting. The thing when you are sowing snapdragon seeds is just to be careful how many you sow. The seeds are absolutely tiny and it's really easy to get carried away and then you're just gonna have so many seedlings that you can't cope with them. So try and just put one or two seeds in an individual cell when you are sowing snapdragons and then you can control the number that you are growing. 
One of my absolute favourite cut flowers to grow is Cosmos and at the moment my plants are looking absolutely fantastic this year. They are got really bushy, lovely green growth coming on them but it's still early days for flowers. But I thought if I was doing a video on my favourite cut flowers then we really had to include Cosmos as well. And actually over here I have one beautiful pink Cosmos flower flowering to show you today. In the next few weeks this is just going to go boom and we are going to have tons and tons of beautiful Cosmos flowers. They are really delicate and um, you have to try and cut them when it's not raining so sometimes water damage can affect the petals a little bit but when you get a nice dry spell of weather in the summertime they look brilliant and they do go right through to September time for me so they're great at the back end of the season when you can mix them with the dahlias and the chrysanthemums and the rebecca so they are more of a late summer flower for me than an early one but they are absolutely stunning. Here's another of my favourites, it's Ami Magis. It is a brilliant filler flower for bouquets. Lovely white frothy flowers. The one tip I would give you for this is it is quite difficult to overwinter in Scotland. It is a hardy annual so you can sow it and into little seedling plants and plant them outside in the autumn time but I haven't got very many to survive like this. I have more success if I sow them in the autumn time and then leave them in the greenhouse over the winter so they've got some protection. So here in the cutting patch I also have scabious which is a great flower for me at the back end of the season so late summer through to early autumn and those first frosts and scabious um, produces an abundance of flowers it really just keeps churning them out when it gets going and these ones here in the garden are now getting big enough that you can start to see the flower heads on them in the next few weeks we'll get all sorts of different ones. I love that you can get so many different colours of scabious as well so you can mix and match it with with whatever kind of bouquets you're making so you can get nice white ones if you've got braids or retail bouquets that are more pastel in theme or you can get deep dark rich burgundy scabious which can go with darker dahlias if you have braids wanting something a little bit deeper in color and they are just fabulous because they just keep churning out those flowers so once they get going they don't stop right up till those first frosts My Aurelia here is a gorgeous white flower to have in bouquets and really easy to grow from seed as well. I like these seeds because they're really quite large and chunky so they're easy to work with and you can see what you're doing. This Aurelia is all just starting to go over now and is starting to go to seed. So I have succession sowing some more Aurelia and it is just small seedlings just now and I'll get planted out in the garden for summer flowers later on in the season. So that's a top tip as well, just keep succession sowing your hardy annuals so that you've always got some new ones coming through because it's a shame when you've got such a beautiful flower just have a few weeks of it and then that's the end. Thanks so much for watching this week's video all about some of my favourite flowers to grow in the cutting patch here at Cloudberry Flowers. In the next couple of weeks I'm hoping to do some videos on my favourite perennials for growing cut flowers and also a video on the herbs that I use in my flower arranging that I grow in the garden. There's lots of lovely ones there that we can talk about too.